Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Savoy Savoyi Thought. Uh, I work at the work at Ustream as a senior front-end developer. You can find me on Twitter as that. And today I will talk about uh, how to develop desktop application with JavaScript, Node, HTML, and CSS with the help of Node WebKit. But first, a little background story that why we started even with developing front-end uh, developing desktop applications in Node. Uh, we have a product called the Use Remember Player. This is it. Uh, this is an iframe based player. We put it in an iframe because this way we have more control about its code base. We don't have to worry about versions developed, deployed over the internet. And uh, basically, you can, we can do every, everything in the code, we deploy it, and everywhere it refreshes it instantly. So it's really cool. Uh, it supports several platforms like desktop, mobile, TVs, and gaming gaming applications or gaming consoles. What it does is live video playback with the help of Flash or HTML5, and uh, <coughs> it has approximately 60 million visits per month. Because of this number, this is a key part of our product. Uh, Every people at Ustream, marketing team, the sales team, the product team are very sensible about what happens with this product. And uh, because of this, uh, a quick debugging is really, really a key because every, if anything happens with this, a lot of things can be affected in our company. But debugging can be a bit problematic because on desktop, you have the developer console. You open your browser, you open the dev console, select the iframe and start debugging, it's really easy. On mobile, however, you have almost two choices. You can do native remote, deb remote debugging using iOS X Safari or Android SDK and Chrome. As far as I heard, you don't have to use the Android SDK with the latest Chrome. Uh, but this depends on uh, OS and browser versions. So older phones, older um, OSs won't work in this way. Then you can try to use Evo Edge Inspect, which is based on Winery, which is an open source application with the HTTP and the WebSocket server, which has a front end to, deploy, uh, to display the log file logs. But to use this, you have to put some additional code, some additional library of Winery to your own code, and I don't find that very, I don't know, relaxing. These are all fine, but all these things are for developers. The developers are, can, can be familiar with these, but uh, error reports are usually not from developers. Some errors are from the client, and some errors are from the marketing and the sales and the executive team. They find it first, I don't know, <laughs> they click. Uh, in our case, this means some people in the US or Korea or Japan. Uh, let's have an example. This is Momoclo. They are currently the most popular girl band in Japan. They call, they play something called hyperactive J-pop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once they had an event on Ustream, uh, it lasted 24 hours long, and for that day we have to whisk in the whole Japanese Ustream site in their color, of course, <laughs> and their team. Uh, now imagine that during this event, something happens, and I have to describe a Japanese sales accountant how to install Android SDK, or how to debug uh, natively with OS X Safari. Uh, the odds are high that it won't work, even if the Japanese are one of the best error reporters, as, as far as I know, so they are really great. They do little presentations of the bugs, so. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, debugging live content, is two factors, when and where. When is a factor because it's live. Uh, Actually, when you try it next time, when you receive the error ticket, it won't be the same. And where is also a factor because uh, in our product we have the need, we have the ability to restrict the live stream to display only of certain sites or a certain geolocation. So this is a key to have the debug, the error reports, the debug logs from and then when it happens, so as, uh, as, as accurate as possible. So to summarize what we needed, we needed the debug tool uh, on every possible platform because I don't know my colleague in Japan what we use in OS X or Linux or Windows. 
uh, it's an in-house application, so we don't want to make it downloadable, we don't want to put it on an app store or something like that. Uh, its main goal is to quickly, quick login, to have as much as information as possible for a <coughs> more accurate and uh, most accurate uh, bug reports. Okay, now we have to only do the only thing that put the error logs from the player to this debug console, whatever it is. First, I thought of WebRTC. WebRTC is a peer to peer communication between two browsers on a single uh, network. It's really great. I only have to do a Chrome or Firefox only website to use. The people I tell to use it just connect their phones or their devices to that website's IP address or their little desktop IP address. And over WebRTC, it sends the debug logs and there we are. But on mobile, you don't have WebRTC yet. Hey, hey, HTML5. So we have to use WebSockets. But let's put a WebSocket server on the desktop. Uh, if you try, WebSocket servers are not in browsers, they're only clients. Uh, I have read somewhere, Chrome people suggested that you can write an MP API plugin to put a WebSocket server in it, and there's a plugin for Chrome, and you can use it. Okay, but uh, we just want a tiny debug tool, we don't want to be some battleship or star destroyer. The third thing we could try is a remote debugging. So put a WebSocket server somewhere on the internet and use it, but uh, our NetOps and, Devo, NetOps and DevOps team have already enough on their plate, so we don't want to, I don't know, make their things harder. So let's see what alternatives I could use. I looked Apache, at Apache Cordova, formerly called PhoneGap, and uh, I went back in time and tried Adobe. Uh, if you have tried any of these, you can see easily that Apache Cordova is easy to start with. You just download it, install it. It has really good tools in command line interface, and it has desktop builds, so you can add modules for making desktop builds. But it has no WebSocket <coughs> server module. As far as I looked, I tried, I searched, I googled. Only WebSocket client everywhere, WebSocket server module was not in Apache Cordova. Okay, let's try it over here. And an action script free socket server, which is usable over the JavaScript API in Adobe Air, which is really good, but it's not a WebSocket server. You have to implement the WebSocket protocol yourself or, or find an implementation that works. That one doesn't work either. <coughs> I find I tried I found web implementations, I tried them, I checked with the with the protocol description, it should work. It it doesn't, the frames were missing, but the, the player sent it, t t told me that it sent it. Uh, it wasn't working pretty much as easy as I as expected. And then I cried out, we have the VS module in Node, we have the VS module in NPM, why can't we use it and put a front end in over it and, and there we done. So I started Googling Node.js front end and almost as quickly as found, as, as did it find Node WebKit. Node WebKit is a web application runtime. They basically did is uh, putting Chromium next to Node.js. It's developed and maintained by Intel. Nobody knows what they are using it, but let, the, let them be blessed. <laughs> uh, they are maintaining it, maintaining it very well. Uh, lately, I, as, as far as I read, they are doing the notification API uh, on the in the Node WebKit, and it's a biggie because the notification API in the Chrome in the browser works uh, closer to the OS level than to the browser level, so it's basically outside of Chromium. So it's a it's a nice nice task. But on the other things that you can have think of features, it almost everything is the same as in Chrome. It has HTML5, it has GPU acceleration, it has video and audio support. The most use cases and examples I found online are where <coughs> little HTML games and uh, video players or uh, even code editors, IDEs for JavaScript. Let's take a look inside uh, Node WebKit. Odd couples can occur when Node is in the browser. You have Node Core next to DOM API, and you have the NPM modules next to web libraries. If you try to imagine using Node with jQuery, it really sounds absurd unless you have tried Browserify before. Uh, 
but you can manage it. You can manage. You can use to it. The security sandbox of Chrome has to be downgraded to let the file operations and cross-origin requests work. But uh, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about much because this is a packaged application. So if you've done your thing, everything okay, uh, maybe there won't be any third-party library or web script that is running a mock in your code and doing harm. Node itself is, works as the same as we are used to it. The node symbols are injected in the window context right after the DOM init initialization. And the node stays a sync, but it's in a browser. So it's, it's really weird. It was really weird for me that I can use node in a browser, which is there as, 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 as asynchronous as I use it in the server. So it was really weird. Configuration is really easy. They have they are using package JSON, which is great because you can do you can put your node packages, you can node put your node dependencies next to the runtime configuration, which tells you which tells your application how big the window will be when you start it. You know, will it have a Chrome? Will it have a toolbar? It's really great. Uh, other assets like CSS libraries and images are referenced in HTML, just like in any website, and loaded by Chrome, just like any browser. So it's really easy. You don't have to put an extra list in your package JSON that are using images and other CSS and libraries uh, like you have to do in, I don't know, the web. Running is easy. The first is Windows, Linux, and OS, OS X. Uh, you only have to point the node WebKit runtime application to the folder where the package JSON resides. And there it is. You can open your app and debug it and test it and run it. Uh, if you let your application have Chrome and toolbars, you have e you even got the, the Chrome Dev, to Dev Toolkit, the Chrome Dev Toolbar next to it. So you can do debugging as well as just easy as you are doing a, you are doing a website. But it's a desktop application, so it's really cool. Build is also easy. You just zip the application folder, rename it to NW, attach the NW, the node that kit runtime, and there we are. Attaching is... Uh, a bit quirky, but there are ways for it in Windows, in Linux, and in OS X. It's a fully distributable application. Uh, you don't need any installed application or any installed runtime on the client where you give this application to. So it's not like Adobe Air that you have to install Adobe runtime to run Adobe Air file. It's fully distributable and executable application. And if you find the build process a bit tedious, then you can use Grant. The Grant Mode WebKit Builder task is on NPM. It's really easy. I will show you how it works. Some things I have to be told about this build, so be aware. It's a, it's a zip file, basically. So everyone can see your code inside it. Everyone, everyone can unzip the code. So it's no WebKit does not protect, obfuscate, digitally sign, or does not, uh, it's not securing your code. So be careful with that. OK, so demo time. Let's see how it works. Here are the couples. Here are, here, are, here are the couples of our application. We have the call modules from Node, OS, HTTP, Crypto, URL, TLS. We have some uh, DOM APIs like Firewall and URL. We have the VS module for NPM and jQuery and Bootstrap. Because I didn't want to meddle with the front end very much. This is how the Node, uh, the Grant Node WebKit Builder works. First, this is the version of the Node WebKit runtime. So if you upgrade this version, or there is a new version that came out that you want to use, just increment the number here. Uh, the ground task will download that runtime and build your application with it. Uh, the second line is the icon file for Macintosh, Macintosh. The third is where your build will go. And uh, here we, are, we have build for Mac, Windows, uh, and we are skipping Linux for now. Uh, and the last line is where your source files are, and basically that's it. This is the output of the of the build. You can see your neat little folders like Mac and for Windows. These dealers are for the WebGL and the hardware acceleration and stuff to work. This is how application our application will look like, and uh, I will show you it in work. <laughs> So I choose an available IP address and port. I open the website at 
server. And on my phone, I open Safari. This is our web-based player. Here it is. It's connected to the debug console. I start a playback. And all the play information from the playing stream that we have to use in debugging are all there. It's just as easy. And if I want to save the log, I just save the log file. So back to our presentation. Um, so this is the application. This is a debug console. We can save the logs. It's pretty easy to use. And uh, it's quite new, actually. You guys are the, among the first ones who see it, so I haven't introduced this to our QA team yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope they will use it and they'll be happy. Uh, you can find NodeWebKit on GitHub pretty easily. Just search it, and there it is. Um, and basically, that's it. Thank you for your attention. My phone opens a WebSocket connection to an IP address. I entered it. And, uh, You can give a specified URL, or can you, have, you can have any other methods in the web player to start it. So I don't know if I do a gesture or point some clicks in there, and it opens up a little query, and I can enter the IP address, and there it goes. So yeah. basically, that's it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. No more questions. 